Hello everyone. Today we are talking about talking about macros. Now I do have a disclaimer on this particular video. I got about 90 to 95 percent of where I wanted to, to go and could not get to the end because as we will see in the next slide there's no macro recorder in Word like there is in Word or Excel. What that means is we have to write our own code to do the actual manipulation of the macro recorder. So I can get you all the way to the front door and I get you from the back door out the yard, but I can't show you how to do it within the house, how to do it within the code because my visual basic it's what's called VBA, the Visual Basic Application, is a little rusty from back when I was at work. But we are going to talk about how to enable the macro application. You don't have to do that one time. How you would make a macro, how you would name it and create it, and then how you would run it. And then we'll end at that point. Oh, yes. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment on this and any other videos that we've put out. We'd love to hear from you. So here's a definition of a macro. I'll let you read it. My simple definition is it's a recording of keystrokes and or mouse movements within a particular program. And I have done this about 50 times in WordPerfect, if you remember that word processing program many years ago. And I'd also done at least one at work between Windows or in Windows from a mainframe output at work into Quattro, which is a predecessor to uh, Excel. And I've done some others but not in PowerPoint, as we heard earlier. So first things first, we've got to enable the macro module or the software in PowerPoint. And I'm going to show you that two different ways. I'm going to show you that in two slides as for step by step or commands. And then I'm going to show you the screen print so you can actually see where they are on the screen because it's kind of like all over the place. So here we go. As it says, you want to go to File Options, select Customize Ribbon, and then under Main Tabs, select the Developer checkbox. Sounds really impressive, doesn't it? And then choose OK. You're now becoming a developer. From there on the Developer tab, you want to go to the Code Group, and click macros and what the what these last couple of little steps do is actually get to the point where you can name the macro and create it before you have to hop into visual basic and then on the macro dialog box under macro name you select the macro you want to want you want to use and then click run which is execute now we're going to show it to you step by step uh, using screen prints Go to File, Options, down here at the bottom. Customize Ribbon. And then you want to scroll down these ribbons here. And you'll go to Developer. And then the Developer Ribbon will display. And you want to click on Macros. And and once you get it installed, which has only two more steps to do, you can also have macros displayed under the View tab. I do not have a screen print of that, but you'll see it once you get all this enabled. And what we have here, this is the Visual Basic box. Starts up the like a like a big text box where you do your programming, and then these twelve items are part of the visual commands that you would add to the file to do whatever it is you want to do. 
in few code. It's just that you want to look at the code that you've written. So once you select macros, you'll give it a name, select which file you want it to run in. You can also add a description at the bottom, and then you would say run. And as you can see, once you get it going with Visual Basic, you can edit it and, of course, create and delete. So you may ask, why do I need a macro? If you got some tricky alignments, you know, X and Y coordinates or some layout, fitting shapes in the tables, um, it's a little bit easier than using the drawing guides or the, the rulers, left, right, up, down, to distribute shapes. And, there, and there's probably other items out there also that could be used. The one that came to my mind was that I do two or three times a year is have two or three hundred photos that I need to bring in the PowerPoint. And even though that's going from a Word application, I mean, a Microsoft Windows application into PowerPoint, it's still easier by using the photo album feature that we talked about a few videos ago, where it goes out to the file or to the folder, brings in all of those pictures and populates one picture per slide for your photo album. And there are probably others. I have another example that I was going to do later in the program here. Okay, so let's build a macro. I guess we're there. What I did, I took five screen print shots because I have dual monitors. And you'll see this, the same text here in Word, but then I have different images here. And you can see they're all food-based. <laughs> they're all related to sweets. I love my sweets. But what I was going to do, and let's drop out. What I was going to do was have the macro crop the crop the um, power I mean the, the word Microsoft Word out. It basically would follow these keystrokes. Then it would move this to the top left and go as full screen as they could. And that would be the end of the macro. But that didn't happen, so that's how you would do it manually. And there's your full screen. So we're not going to shed any tears, but we are a little upset that we've got to do further research and study on Visual Basic to get this completed. I'll be working on that over the next few weeks. I'm not sure what few is, four, 14, maybe more. But we'll work on that. And if some of you out there have experience in Visual Basic, drop me a line so we can get this nice and tidy for the rest of the viewers. And of course, it goes without saying, once your macro has been written, please test it at least once or twice, if not three times, with either sample data or a copy of the data that you'll be using. You want to make sure that it does what you think it's going to do. Otherwise, you better go back and edit it. And like with dragging the pictures from Explorer into PowerPoint, there may be easier ways to do things. Photo album is pretty easy. The intent of this video was to show you how to enable a macro, a macro module, how to get the macro started, how to get them running, and then we'll figure out that last little bit, the actual computation to do what it is we want to do keystroke wise and mouse wise. And you'll know when you need it. If you've got some operation that's more than five or 10 repetitions, you probably need a macro. So to go over the highlights again, there is no macro recorder. Like in Word and Excel, we have to use Visual Basic to get this thing going. We did enable the macro application. 
and we showed you how to create a macro and we showed you how to run one it's just the part in the middle that we did not go over because of uh, lack of experience or a lack of experience in visual basic so let me know what you think about this if you have experience as i stated earlier let me know maybe we can wrap this up or do a dual or joint video on programming there is lots of stuff out there on the internet uh found out you could actually share your macros between users uh, and and the and the issue is microsoft took this feature away in i think 2013 because of a security issue and no one's been able to do it since like powerpoint 2007. Speaking of which, if you have Microsoft 365, this is not an option. But if you have Microsoft 365 subscription, like I do, then you can at least enable a macro and, you know, figure out your visual basic. So that's it. Hopefully, we'll get the rest of it figured out in the not too distant future. Love to hear from you. And we will talk to you soon.